Hi everybody, this is section 4.2 on linear functions from our Hawks Learning College Algebra textbook for Math 101. Okay, so a linear function, um, and typically we use the function f, it can be g or h, but we typically start with f. So a linear function f in the variable x is any function that can be written in the form of f of x equals mx plus b. Um, where m and b are real numbers, m can't be zero, and um, f of x equals mx plus b is also called a first-degree polynomial function. Um, it's a first-degree polynomial function because if you notice, um, the x, which is your variable, is to the first power. There's no um, higher power in the um, expression. And also, mx plus b should be very familiar to you as we're used to having y equals mx plus b. And this is our slope-intercept form. And remember, f of x replaces our y. So really, um, when you put the f of x in there in place of the y, you're saying that, yes, this equation is a function, a linear function. So now in the past section, we did talk about um, functions. And in order for a function to be a function, it has to pass that vertical line test. So recall, a vertical line goes straight up and down. Um, if you have a graph with a vertical line, it cannot represent a function. It can be an equation, but it is not a function. And remember, your vertical lines are going to be your equations that are x equals a number. So they are not a function. Great, so now what we're going to do is we're going to graph the linear functions. And again, this is just like graphing an equation of a line. Um, you can graph it various ways. You have to find two points. You can um, you know, find your x and your y intercepts to graph it, or you can pick two points that you want to pick, um, just plug them in and solve. Either way, it's okay. So we're going to start with A right here, and I'm going to make my t-chart for us to graph it. All right, and again, I'm going to do, we talked about x and y intercepts. So if I make x a 0, and remember y is the same as your f of x, so we can put that f of x there too. Um, so if I have y equals 3x plus 2, because f of x and y are interchangeable. Again, the f of x just says it is a function. We know it's a function. It's defined as a function. It passes the vertical line test. Um, let's plug in our zero. So we have 3 to the 0 power plus 2, or not to the 0 power, but 3 times 0. So we know 0 plus 2 is going to equal 2. So my first ordered pair that I can graph is 0, 2. And then for my next ordered pair, um, I'm going to do, well, I don't know, let's just pick 1. Or actually... If we want, we can do, I said we're going to do our intercepts, so let me erase that. So we're going to put 0 in for y. All right, so we have 0 equals 3x plus 2. And we're going to solve this. I'll subtract 2 from both sides. We get 3x equals negative 2 divided by 3. So negative 2 thirds and 0 when we go to graph it. Now, if you don't like having that fraction there, Again, you could plug in, we could do x is 1, um, so we don't have to deal with a fraction. We can graph fractions, it's just not as easy. But we could do y equals 3 times 1 plus 2. So we get 3 plus 2, which equals 5. So y would be 5. Um, and now we have points to plot, so we can graph that linear function. And we'll take a look at that function in a second, the graph of that. Let's focus on b for a minute. We have b is g of x equals 3. Now remember, g of x represents that it is a function. It's defined as a function. But if we were going to graph that, looking at our equation, really what we have is we have y equals 3. Remember here, there's no x value. This is um, called a constant function. And remember, when we graph y equals 3, when we make our t-chart, y is always going to be 3. And x can be any number because it's always going to be on there. So I usually do 0, 1, and 2. 
Um, when we have that equation, remember, what kind of line? Is it vertical or horizontal for y equals 3? And hopefully, because we talked about it on the other side, or the other page, you're going to say, well, I know y equals 3. That's going to be a horizontal line. All right, so let's take a look at both of these graphs. All right, so here is the graph of our f of x equals 3x plus 2. And if you notice, we had the ordered pair 0, 2, and then 1, 5 is graphed. And if we looked, 0, negative 2 thirds would be right in there. Okay, so they do show all those points on that graph. And we know it's a function because it does pass that vertical line test. And here, here is the graph for our y or our g of x equals 3. Or again, like I said, it's our y equals 3 if we think about it that way. And again, y will always be 3 and x can be any number. So if you think about the points we wrote on the other page, we had um, 0, 3, 1, 3, and 2, 3. There's those three points and it forms that horizontal line. And remember, your horizontal lines have a slope of zero. All right, so now what they want us to do is find the formula for the linear function whose graph is given. So they gave us the graph, they want us to find the formula or the equation. So what we need to do first is we have a line. Really what we need is we're going to put it in slope intercept form or we're going to do, you know, f of x equals mx plus b. Remember, b is your y-intercept, m is your slope. Um, I do know my y-intercept because I know where it crosses over. I can see that. And it crosses over b as a point is 0, 4 which that will help us. Um, but I also need to find the slope of the line. So what I'm going to do is I can see these two points are very easy to find. So I have 1.04 and then another point, which happens to be my x-intercept, is 2, 0. So we will use those two points to find the slope of my line and then we can just put it in to the mx plus b format. So remember slope is um, y2 minus y1, so we'll do, um, I'm just going to do 4 minus 0 on the top, that's my y values, and then 0 minus 2 on the bottom for my x values. So we'll have 4 over negative 2, and when we simplify that we get m equals, so this is our m, um, negative 2. So now I know the y-intercept is 4 and I know the slope, so my equation would be f of x equals negative 2x um, plus 4. And that is my equation of the line. Um, and we put it in function form, so we did our f of x. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to look at finding the line of best fit and the correlation coefficient. Um, and we're going to look at an example in a second. Um, we are going to use linear regression to find and graph the line of best fit. And linear regression is really just one tool um, in a larger set known as regression analysis. Um, and really what regression analysis is, is it's the art of approximating relationships between variables. And in our case, we're doing linear regression because our points are going to far, form somewhat of a line. Again, they won't be a perfect line, but we can find that line of best fit. Um, and when we use linear regression, it's gonna give us the slope intercept form of the line um, whose graph minimizes the sum of squares of the deviations between the line and the actual data points. Um, we are going to use the least squares method. And it is a little bit of work. Um, we're going to show you how to do it by hand because I think it's important to know. Um, there is a function on your calculator as well. So later on, once you know how to find it and what it represents, using your calculator would be okay. 
Um, but for now, I really want you to be able to do it by hand. I'm going to introduce some symbols that you may or may not have seen before to kind of help you with those. And um, we will step through it all to find the line of best fit and also then look at the Pearson correlation coefficient, otherwise known as R. I mean, one other note to add here is sometimes you'll say, well, line of best fit, I've done it before. I've drawn the line in there. And you can draw a line and eyeball it, but that's different for everybody. And then everybody has a different equation. So it really doesn't, um, you know, doesn't really give you the value of all the lines. If you do it mathematically, you get the true line of best fit. So that's why we're going to use our linear regression to find it. All right, so you can see here we have five points. Um, they look close to a line, but they're not quite a line. They don't form a kind, um, the perfect line. But we're going to use the ordered pairs from those five points to help us um, find the line of best fit. So the first thing you really want to do is what are the ordered pairs for each point? So for the first one, it looks like it is negative 1, 6. For the second point there, it's going to be 1, 5. Then we have 2, 4, 3, oops, 3, 2, and my last one looks like 5, 1. So we're going to use those five points. And the first thing we're going to do is we want to calculate, step one is we want to calculate And you may be saying, well, what is x with a line over it and y with a line over it? Um, these are the averages of the x and the y values. So we need to calculate the averages of x, the x values, and the, averages, the average of the y values. Just as a reminder, to calculate those averages, um, you take, add them all up, and divide by the number of items you have. So if I were to do my x values here... Let's see, I would do negative 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5. And I have 5 points, so I'll divide by 5. So my average for x is going to be, let's see here, um, negative 1 and 1 cancel each other out. So then 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 5 would give me 10 over 5. So my average for x, the x values is 2. And then let's calculate the y average. So we're going to add the y values. So we add 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 and divide it by 5. Um, so when you add those together, 6 plus 5 is 11 plus 4 more is 14, 15. Um, and then we will end up with, for our y, excuse me, I moved that, um, y is going to equal 18 divided by 5, which is going to give us about 3.6 when we divide it, or not about, but 3.6. Now, um, it is probably a little bit easier in this case to, sometimes it's better to work with fractions, sometimes it's better to work with decimals. In our case, we're going to leave it in um, decimal format because we're going to do some adding and subtracting and it's easier with that decimal I think. So on here you can see we have just a repeat of what we did on the other slide. We have um, the five coordinates and then we found the averages and now what we're going to do is we're going to construct a table and we're going to construct a table for the values of and this is read as delta x and delta y, which delta stands for in the Greek language, um, the change. So we want the differences um, or the difference um, between the x value and the average. So we want the difference, um, this is the change in x or the difference in x um, and the average of x, and then we also want the difference between 
y and the average of y. So we're going to look at the next page and that's going to show us the table and we'll talk about how it was created. All right, so here on this table you can see you would create this on your paper. What they did is they took x, the coordinates, so they listed negative 1, 1, 2, 3, and 5, and then they subtracted the average that we found for x, which remember our average for x was 2. So they did negative 1 to get the second column, they did negative 1 um, minus negative 2, and then 1 minus 2, 2 minus 2, um, and so forth to create that chart. And here we are doing the same thing with our y values. They're taking the y coordinates and subtracting the average from all the y points. And this one, because we had a decimal, we're going to get some decimal answers. But again, that's OK. So now we have um, 6 minus 3.6 gave us 2.4. 5 minus 3.6 gave us 1.4. 4 minus 4 tenths, or 3.6 gave us 4 tenths, and so forth. Right now, what we need to do is we need to next calculate um, the, um, the sum of the difference in x or delta x squared. So that means we'll need to take, um, and this crazy looking E right here, right here stands for the sum of, it's a sigma, and so it stands for the sum of the terms, sorry. My stylus is not working very well. All right, we'll have to fix that. Um, and then they also need the sum of delta x times delta y, and then the sum of delta y squared. Um, so we're going to make a table leading to these sums, and I'm going to show you that on the next page. Okay, so you can see here what they've dumped, done to find this um, table. So the first thing when we did, first we needed to square all of our delta x's or our differences from the x variable and the mean. So we took each point. So we took the negative 3 and we squared it. So we took the negative 3 here and squared it to get us our 9. Then we took negative 1 and squared it to get positive 1. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and then 3 squared is 9. So then after we squared each one, we added them all up. The sum of, we did sigma, which means, again, to add them all up. Um, and then what we did is we did the same thing, but first we multiplied the change in x and the change in y, or delta x times delta y, the difference. So we did negative 3 times 2.4, and if you do that on your calculator, you will find that it equals negative 7.2. Negative 1 times 1.4 gives us negative 1.4. 0 times anything is 0. 1 times negative 1.6 is negative 1.6. And then 3 times negative 2.6 gives us negative 7.8. So then we added all of those, we added all of these values up to get our negative 18. Um, and then we did the same thing with delta y. We squared each value, so we took 2.4 and squared it to get 5.76. 1.4 gave us 1.96, and so forth, and then we added them all up. Okay, so that was another chart that we created, to, um, or another three columns we added to our chart to help us find our line of best fit. So now we have all the information we need to determine our line of best fit. And the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate our slope. To do that, to calculate the slope, you are going to take the sum of delta x times delta y. So that number you got in that last column when you did the sum of 
delta x times delta y, which was negative 18, and divide it by the sum of all your delta x's squared. So from that other column when you're 20. So here is our slope of our line. And to get the um, y-intercept, we can take, and we know that b is going to be equal to um, the average of y minus your slope times the average of x. So again, it's not just y and x here, it's your average of y and your average for x times the slope we just found. So they did 3.6 minus negative 9 tenths times 2 to get 5.4. And then once you have the slope and the y-intercept, you just put it into your equation. So our line of best fit is y equals negative 0.9x plus 5.4. And here you can see it. They graphed it. So we can see the line of best fit in correlation to the other points um, or the points on the graph. And, you know, it comes close to most of the points. You know, not all the points are on it, which it wouldn't necessarily always be anyways. But this is the line that best um, correlates, the equation that best correlates to the five points that are on the graph. And the next thing that we want to look at, the last thing we're going to look at is we want to look at what we call, you've probably heard of it before, is the R value. Um, they're calling it, they're giving it by its official name, the Pearson correlation coefficient r and this is a number that allows us to answer this question like how close is our line of best fit compared to our points like is this a good line of best fit were they able to match it with most of the points or you know is this line because our points are so crazy kind of off is this line not a good fit with the points that we have the data points so to do the line or the course, the Pearson correlation coefficient, we're going to use the formula on the next page. Okay, so to find our correlation coefficient, what you are going to do to find the R value is you are going to take that number that you got for um, the sum of delta x times delta y, and you're going to divide it by the square root of the sum of delta x squared and the square root of the sum of delta y squared. So you're going to take, you know, these two values here, take the square root of them. Those two values, take the square root of those and then multiply them together and divide that by um, that number we found, the sum of delta x times delta y. And you can see they substituted our numbers in here. It's definitely a problem where you would want to use a calculator. Um, now, your answer should always be, R should always be um, greater than or equal to negative 1 or and greater than or equal to 1. So it should always be between negative 1 and 1. Um, when you get a negative answer, it's simply saying that the slope of your line is a negative number. And when you get a positive answer, it's saying, okay, the slope of your line of best fit is a positive answer, um, a positive number. So that the negative and positive doesn't necessarily mean a good or a bad thing. It's really just talking about the slope. But when you look at your number, um, and really just the absolute value of it, if you have a value close to zero. That indicates no linear dependence of y on x. So it really means it's not a very good line of best fit. It doesn't correlate to the points given very well. Um, but if you have a number closer to one, that indicates a strong linear dependence. Um, so that means that the line of best fit is a good fit for the points that you have. It's a good equation to use. So closer to one is better. Um, closer to zero means there's not a strong correlation there. And also, um, you know, again, if it's negative, it just means that the line of best fit has a negative slope to it. And if we go back and look at the graph previously, our line was a negative, um, had a negative slope to it. So our R value is negative. And here, 
or our value is very close to 1. It's 0 0.970. So that means that this is line is very good line of best fit to model the behavior of the points. So it's a good equation to use to represent the data points. All right, so the next one we're going to run through quickly is, again, looking at that linear regression to find and graph the line of best fit and look at R. Um, <clears throat> so you'll see on the next page our graph and the points that we're going to use. So when you look here, you can see we have four points. And again, we want to um, find the average of the x values and the average of the y values to get started. Um, we got to list our four points. So um, let's see here. My first point here is it looks like 1, 5. Then we have 2, 1. 3, 5, and 4, 4. Okay, so again, the first thing you want to do is find the average for your x values and the average for your y values. So remember that is represented by that straight line. So go ahead, pause the video, find the average for each, and then come back and check. All right, so you should have found, when you found the average for each um, value, that the average for the x values is 2.5 and the y values is 3.75. So now we're going to use those values to do the difference in x and the difference in y based on our um, original coordinates and the average. So again, use your chart or create a chart. Take your average for your x values and subtract it from the original x values. So our first one, you know, our first x coordinate was 1, 1 minus 2.5. I want you to create that chart for me, pause the video, and then come back and double check your work. All right, and so if you look here, um, we have a table where we are showing delta x, or the difference between the x values and the average of the x values. And so for the first value, 1, we had negative 1.5, 2 is negative 0.5, 3, 0.5, and then 4, 1.5. And this chart here just shows us our um, delta y, or again, the difference between the y values and the y average. So 5 minus our um, y average gives us 1.25. 1 minus the average would give us negative 2.75 and so on. All right, next what I would like you to do is now that we have our delta x and delta y, I would like you to find the sum of delta x squared, so square each um, delta x value that you have and then add them all together. I would like you to find the sum of delta x times delta y and then also the sum of delta y squared. And I want you to find all of those um, and then come back and we'll take a look at them. So pause the video, come take a look and we'll look at them all. All right, so if you look at this table, hopefully your table looks the same. Um, when you're rounding, it would be good to go out to either three or four points. Um, it may vary a little bit on your numbers depending on how you rounded, but I would at least go out to three decimal place values each time. Um, and so you can see our three values we got. We have five for the sum of delta x squared. We got 0.5 for the sum of delta x times delta y. And then the sum of delta y squared was 10.75. So now we can use those values to help us find the slope, the y-intercept, and then also um, use that to find our equation of our line and our coefficient correlation or correlation coefficient. All right, so we need to find the slope. And remember, to find the slope using our linear regression model, we are going to 
the slope is equal to the sum of delta x times delta y divided by, pardon my drawing, I know it's not very good here, um, of the sum of delta x squared. So that means for our chart, we are going to have 0 0.5 divided by 5. And that means that our slope is going to equal 1 tenth, 0.1. Um, to find B, B, remember, is equal to the average of Y, which we have to go back and look at our chart um, to find that, div or minus the slope times the average of x. So that means our average of y was 3.75 minus our slope, so 0.1 times the average of x, which was 2.5. So that's going to give us a b value of 3.5 when we do the math. So our equation of our line is going to be y equals mx plus b, or our slope is 0.1x plus our 3.5. All right, so if you look here, you can see the line graphed um, in relation to the other points um, or the points on the graph. And if you can see here, you look and notice the, the, the line does go through one of the points or close to the point. Um, but the other three, it's not that close to them. So what we want to look at is, you know, is this really a good line of best fit for the data? Is this going to be a helpful tool to help us evaluate the data or a helpful equation to use um, for any information that we need. So we're going to look at our correlation coefficient. All right, so remember, to do your correlation coefficient, you are going to take the sum of delta x times delta y divided by the square root of the sum of delta x squared and the square root of the sum of delta y squared. And um, we have, we end up with 0.5 divided by the square root of 5 and the square root of 10.75. When we use our calculator to calculate that our R value, it's a positive number, so that means our slope was positive. And if we looked, yes, it was a positive slope. It went up from left to right. Um, but our R value is 0, it's 0.068, which that's very close to 0. So, Again, the closer it is to zero, the um, line is not a very good fit with the data. The closer it is to one, the better a fit it is. If it's you know really close to one, it's a great fit with the data. But here, it's very close to zero, so it's, it's a poor model um, for the behavior of the data. So it's probably not something that we would want to use um, when looking at the data and trying to... Um, get other information from it or use it for things, it would not be something that we would want to use. And that is it for everything in 4.2.